And I believe that if you have the desire to be saved, now I, I believe this and I think this is evidence of it, that if you're sitting there and you're in a village, you're in an African village, and you look up to the sky and you see that sun and you see the moon and you see the stars and you look around and you see the water brooks and you look at that totem pole and you're like, there's no way that made all this. Lord, show yourself. I believe God will give witness. I do believe that. And people often type say, well, you know, what about the people in the dark corners of the world? You know, if they've never had a witness, you're telling me they'll go to hell. I'm telling you, they have the invisible things to be clearly seen that they're without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of God. And if they would look up into the heavens and say, Lord, would you please show me who you are? You know what I believe? I believe a Philip's going to come walking over there. Because here, in the middle of all this great work, God puts on Philip's heart to go to a desert. Now think about that. you got a great church, it's growing, thousands being added, people being saved, people being baptized, persecution, spreading the gospel. And God says, hey, Philip, come here. Me? Yeah, come here. I want you to leave all this big work and go to a desert for one person. Why? Because over there in the desert is a man with his Bible open, reading it, but he doesn't understand. Here's the Ethiopian eunuch. He's got a Bible. He's in a desert, but God sees his heart. You ever been out knocking doors? I mean, I, I can give you story after story after story after story after story of people, both here in Ohio, in Romania, anywhere I've been soul winning. And you knock on the door, and there's someone either with a Bible there's someone who, their story is always very similar. You know, I was just asking God. I remember the, one of the soul winning marathons, I think we did it in Lakeland, the first one we did in Lakeland. There was an older lady, and her sister had died, and she was up all night wondering where her sister was. The family had left, and they had gone to the funeral, and she was all by herself in the house. I remember knocking on the door. It was already open, but I knocked on the door, didn't hear anything. I was getting ready. I'd waited a while. I knew there was someone was in there, but she, she was older. She didn't even hear me knocking. She comes to the door as I'm turning around, and she's like, yo, I didn't know you were at the door. She said, I'm sorry, I just haven't had any sleep last night. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm Pastor Boyle from Revival Baptist Church. And she said, oh, man, oh, can you talk for a few moments? She poured out her heart. She said, my sister just died, and I'm all by myself. She's like, I haven't had any sleep. I don't know where she's at. I, and I'm like, well, ma'am, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? She said, I have no idea. I can't help but think she's in the house saying, Lord, are you real? Do you exist? And then just randomly a Baptist pastor knocks on her door with the gospel light. Oh, that's no coincidence, my friend. And oftentimes they don't tell you the backstory. They won't tell you. They don't sit there and say, oh, thank you. This, you don't understand what I was going through. You just have to know this one thing. When you've got your Bible and you're prayed up and you're asking God to lead you, I'm telling you, He does. Now, Calvinists will say, see, that's the irresistible grace. If God wants you saved, He just, he just selects you out of, out of the millions. No, because the Ethiopian eunuch was searching for God. 